thank you. Namaste. My heart will pronounce to revered Maharaja. Happy birthday to you, sir. May your presence, may all the seekers of spirituality, peace-loving people, come together and ignite this flame of love. Make sure the entire planet is ablaze with love. We need more and more hearts. This is the beginning. 10,000 from Maharishi and many more will come together, joining hearts, making this as a one family. My heartfelt gratitude to all of you for coming to Kanha. Kana is a place where we trigger love, trigger peace, harmony, and it has begun with this great institution of Maharishi. I'm so proud of all of you, and especially Rajas and Maharajas and Maharaja and his family, and all of you. You have participated in this spiritual adventure without any prejudice you made this as your home and we welcome you as a home members thank you i before we go to sleep tonight let us offer a humble prayer just before going to bed that may Maharaja live long enough to serve and may all the hearts brim with peace and love and harmony. May God grant him a very long life in his family. I'm so proud, really so proud, and I cannot overemphasize this. Because many terrorists, I was sharing with Maharaja and Sri Raja Luis Alvarez, that terrorists, you know, they have so much of unity. If, if someone in Afghanistan or in some country manufactures a bomb with a great technology. He is ready to share it with whoever wants to blow the bomb. But the peace-loving saints and sages, the God-lovers so-called, I say so-called because they are not really truly lovers of gods. They are pretentious. They never come together. Have you seen that? Any two spiritual organizations coming together, working together, thriving together. No. But each one is trying to prove that they are better than the other. My great master, who always guided us, he said, Don't, there is nothing wrong thinking yourself to be great. Go ahead, think yourself, you are great. You are also Maharaja. But here comes his wisdom. Always think the other person is better. With that spirit and with that guidance of my beloved Master, my Gurudev, 
I consider Maharaja to be better than us. And this is not a matter of joke. I am making such a statement with all my heart and all humility. I invite one and all, all the respected elders who are present here on this dais, my salutations to you all. They are also part of this unification, all coming together, being united in this spiritual adventure. Well, peace is not too far. It's up to us. It is within us. It is within our reach. The world peace, the universal peace, the dream of making the entire globe as one family, country without boundaries, is possible only when individual member of the society is at peace. Can I create peaceful vibration in my home? I can create peaceful vibration in my home only when I am at peace and other members of the family are also at peace. How to achieve it? How to attain it? It's so difficult, it seems, but we have to creates that level of consciousness within, within us. And when multitude, people from all corners of the world may come together and form an egregore, egregore of people with higher level of consciousness that we will be able to trigger some level of mutation. <laughs> Humanity will change with that kickstart of the mutation. Genetic mutation it's a must. Just as we talk about epigenetic changes, epigenetic changes mean something that environment influence at a chromosome level. All these peaceful individuals, most of you are senior citizens, you can't transfer your genetics now. <laughs> but we can surely create a vibratory level, which Maharaja had started long back. Maharishi had started even before. And we are all learning that how many coming together and forming an egregore can trigger a shift in consciousness. And this shift in consciousness can create mutation. And this mutation can change the genetic pattern of the human race. This is the dream we have. <laughs> meditation is very simple. Heartfulness offers this meditation to one and all without any bias and without any charge. Brahma Vidya, the knowing of the fact that Aham Brahma, all are Brahma and all from Brahma. These are the stages of our progress. And I, in my meditation, feel that I am part of the cosmic consciousness. And when I also feel that all around me, my sisters and brothers, the trees and animals and plants, the rocks, the skies and the stars and rivers, they also have some level of consciousness. And they are also part of Brahma. I am not the only one. And to know that everything is from Brahm. That is the beginning of spirituality. It is not the end. To know that all are from Brahm. What is the next step? I have been praising this word coined by Maharishi, Sadhguru. I'm not talking of Sadhguru from Coimbatore. I'm talking of Sadhguru Sri Maharishi, the great soul, who coined this word, transcendental meditation, meaning to continuously keep transcending. Aham Brahmasmi, 
transcend that. All are Brahm. That's the next progress. All from Brahm. That's another next. And what is after that? Par Brahmand. Going beyond Brahm. Only my master, my guide, could boldly say that we can go beyond Brahm. And that's a matter of experience. And what is Brahm after all? When we talk of Atman, Atman means movement and thinking. Atman. At means movement. Man means to think. When we talk of Brahman, when Atman realizes that I am Brahman, what happens there? There is no longer movement. It is Bruha plus Man. It means expansion and contemplation. It is in movement that we see linear. In expansion, it is three-dimensional. It's no longer thinking, but it is contemplation. Your consciousness has now taken a quantum leap. And going beyond that is unspeakable. But you do feel it in your heart. You do feel it at the depth of your meditation when your consciousness rises beyond Sahastra Talkamal. SDK is generally considered to be the last stop in the yogic journey, but that's not the case. People get stuck. They get stopped because the Anandam, Sat Chit Anand, is felt so strongly at the SDK that you don't desire to go beyond it. That doesn't mean there is nothing beyond it. There is much more. So, let's all try, come together, experience states beyond Brahman, beyond Parabrahman, and beyond Sat Chit Anand. Can it happen in one session? No. Day after day, as my consciousness purifies, I become simpler and purer, then there is a possibility. Kabir, the great saint, he declared the final state is akin to, he compared that state like raindrops falling in the ocean and raindrop has now become the ocean. Raindrop cannot say that I have become the ocean now. That's why Vedas talk of neti, neti, neti. The entire Veda talks very positively in the beginning. But in the end, Vedas say neti, neti. They talk negative. It cannot say it is this, it is this, it is this. Because nothing in this world that exists that is comparable with the ultimate. That's why it is declared that the ultimate state cannot be compared with this, this, and this. That's why neti, neti, neti. That doesn't mean that ultimate state cannot be experienced. We can experience it, provided this merger in the infinite ocean can happen. That means consciousness that we all talk about evolution of consciousness has to become continuously incremental. Consciousness simply defined degree of awareness. By that we mean also degree of unawareness. When my purity can completely 100% resonate with the ultimate purity, I become eligible it automatically happens, the merger happens, just as oil cannot mix with water. The natures are different. In order for me to merge with the Divine, I have to imbibe those qualities. I have to transcend beyond my animalistic human nature to humane 
and become divine myself. May on this auspicious occasion, on the birth anniversary of our dear Maharaja, may the choicest blessings descend from our Gurus and we all bask in their love. The puja that we just offered, you have continuously heard one name again and again, one word again and again. What is that word? Samarpan. Lord Jesus also talks of Samarpan. Follow me. Buddha talks of Buddham Saradam Gachami. Follow me. Samarpan. Lord Krishna talks of Samarpan. In my earlier days, you know, when I was listening to all this, everybody talks, follow me, surrender to me. I thought they are so big, egoistic people. Jesus such a big ego. Follow me, otherwise you can't reach heavens. Same thing, Krishna, surrender to me and I can deliver it to you. I thought they are egoistic, but now I have understood very well that unless and until I surrender, I dissolve my ego at the feet of my Gurudeva. I cannot move even an inch in the field of spirituality. <laughs> Surrender means dissolving your ego and dedicate everything. Dedicate your love, dedicate your flowers, dedicate your food, Everything that was dedicated in this puja, it's symbolical. Life, once dedicated, all other pujas will end. One surrender is needed. I don't have to say to God every day, I surrender, I surrender, I surrender. And you are re-emphasizing your I again and again. <laughs> Drop it once and for all and lead a life peaceful. All permits, Maharaja Ji, can we have